and welcome to the I Can Do program. I'm Dr. Salinas. We've created this program to help those of you out there who have a disability, injured, or maybe just need a little bit of exercise and help recapturing the quality of life that you once had. We're gonna be using the cane as an exercise tool and a martial arts weapon. We're gonna change it so that it is no longer seen as a crutch but an empowering tool to help you have the quality of life you deserve. Welcome to the third episode of the I Can Do program. Today's episode is going to focus on being present in the here and the now. Let's get started. There are going to be times where we do techniques or stretches that require both our hands to be empty. At those times, what we're going to do is we're going to hook the cane either in our pocket or belt or our waistband. And then we're gonna go through and do the techniques. Okay, now the reason why we want to learn how to do this and get comfortable doing this is because I could be getting into my car or carrying something and, and need my hands free, but if something happens, still be able to quickly access my cane and not run the risk of knocking it down and having to fumble on the ground for it. So when we do these empty-handed techniques, Put your cane either in the hook in the pocket or your belt. Now let's warm up our wrists. We're going to take our hands, clasp them in front, pull them down in front of our chest as the elbows come up. Focus on breathing, nice and relaxed. Now gently switch and point down and pull the hands up and push the elbows down, intensifying the stretch on the wrist and getting them ready for the cane exercise. Now gently relax, shake it out. Now we're going to do the single hand cane rotation. Grab your cane in the center, grab your forearm, and just turn your hand. Palm up, palm down. We're being gentle here. We're not pushing hard and fast because we're just warming up the tendons and the muscles in the wrist. Alright, so just palm up, palm down. The hand is relaxed. Now we're going to move back behind the elbow. We're going to relax these three fingers. We're going to hold on with the ring as we go a little bit further, but we're still being gentle. And now we're going to go to the shoulder, hand to the shoulder. We're going to go full range of motion, allowing the elbow to move and allowing the wrist to go as comfortable as it can. Now change hands, palm up, palm down again. Good. Now move back to the elbow, relaxing the fingers. Keeping control of your cane with the ring between the index finger and the thumb. Now back to the shoulder. Full range of motion, allowing the elbow to move. Focus on the breath. Single hand cane rotation. Good job. Now we're going to go ahead and do the shoulder stretch. Raise your cane up over your head. I'm going to turn to the side so you can see what I'm doing. I'm pulling down and dropping as low as I comfortably can to help open up the shoulders. Then I come back up and I drop down to the other side doing the same thing. Back up and down, up and down. Now if you can go even lower, that's great. Okay, This is ideal, but if you can only go to here, and back up, that's fine as well. Honor where you're at, be gentle with yourself, and then bring it down, relax, shake it out. That's the two-handed shoulder stretch. Now we're gonna warm up our core, our abdominals and our back. Cane in both hands, just allow your arms to swing. You're rotating your hips, rotating your shoulders, and you're, as you rotate, you're allowing your heel to come up off the floor. So you're on your toe, 
and you're going all the way through. That's really important because if you don't do that, then you're putting too much pressure, too much of a twist and a torque on the small of your back. Okay? The twist. Now we're going to stretch our hip flexors. I'm going to turn to the side so you can see what I'm doing. I line my cane up with my feet. I'm going to step back, in this case, since the cane's in the right hand, I'm going to step back the right leg, bend the left leg. I'm going to raise my heel off the ground and bend my right leg in, and then I'm going to push the hip forward. I create a tripod to keep me stable and balanced. And while I'm doing this, I'm relaxed, I'm focusing on deep, slow breaths. And when I exhale, I try and deepen the stretch. Now I'm going to step up. I'm going to, I'm going to turn, but I'm going to change hands, change legs. You don't have to turn it home. Okay, now remember the heels up off the ground, knee is bent, front leg is bent, hips are tucked underneath, so you feel the stretch right here on the hip flexors. And deep breath in. If you want to make it more challenging, you can raise the cane so you can work on your balance as well. Okay, step up, shake it out. Hip flexor stretch. I'm going to turn so you can see what I'm doing. Also, while I'm doing the stretch, I'm going to be looking at the camera. You're going to have your head in the direction of the cane. You place your feet together, or as comfortable together as you can. Your cane about a foot, foot and a half, maybe two feet out in front of you. Both hands on the crook. You're going to bend forward, keeping your legs as straight as possible. And you're going to put your forehead onto the cane, onto the crook. While you're here, you're going to take nice, deep, slow breaths. You're going to focus on rotating or turning the hips up to help intensify the stretch on the hamstrings. Now, we're going to change this stretch into a modified downward dog by pushing the crook of the cane away. We're still supporting our back because we have the two different points for support, so you should feel a stretch in the back, but no painful pressure. You're also now getting the upper back, the latissimus dorsi, dorsi, as you're doing this stretch in this position. Now from here, we're gonna bring it back in. We're gonna grab in the center of the cane, allowing ourselves to go deeper, but yet still providing support so that we are not putting any undue strain on the back. You should feel a slight stretch in the back, but no pain. Focus on your breathing. Now to come up, you're going to walk your hands to the top of the cane. You're going to bend your knees, pull the cane underneath your chest, and use your arms and your legs to push yourself up to a standing position so that at all times your back is protected. Hamstring stretch. Now we're going to focus on stretching the calves. I'm going to turn so you can see what I'm doing. Just like with the hip flexor stretch, I line the cane up, I'm stepping my leg back, but instead of the heel being up, I'm now working to put the heel to the ground, straightening the back leg, okay, hold it. Now we're going to step up, change hands, change legs, so again, step back, and at any point if you want to intensify the stretch or make it more challenging. You can raise your cane and work on your balance as you're doing it. And then bring your feet together, shake it out, the calf stretch. Now utilizing the cane to help build strength, we're going to try and lengthen the cane. So you're going to tense and you're going to try and pull the cane, making it longer. And then as you do that, you're going to slowly rise it up and then lower it. You should feel this in your triceps. You should feel this in the back of the shoulders. You should feel it in your trapezius, which is the muscle in between the shoulder blades. A little bit in your chest, in your forearms. Now relax, shake it out. 
Now we're going to do the isoband lateral raises. So we're going to put our cane down, we're going to take the isoband, we're going to put it under both our feet. And then from here, we're going to raise up our arms in front of us, one at a time. We're going to do a total of 10 reps. So that's two, three, focus on your breath, still keep your breath slow and relaxed, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, and then one more, come on, and ten. The isoband lateral raises. Now after completing the lateral raises, we're going to go straight into the side raises. So we're going to raise our arm up to the side and down. Let's do ten. That's two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and one more. Come on, ten. All right, you're doing great. It is now time to work our bicep. So we're going to do isoband individual curls. Just bring the isoband up and down. Here, let's do ten. That's three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now one more, come on, and ten. Keep up the good work. Now we're going to do the isoband kickbacks. You're going to have it under one foot, leg slightly bent, then forward. You're going to shorten it by pulling it up on the hand that's not going to work out. Put it on your hip, and it has to work out. Pull the elbow up, and kick back. Let's do 10, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Now we're going to switch sides. And again, remember to shorten it. Pull up on the elbow, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Shake out your arms, you're off to a great start. Now we're going to work on our balance and a self-defense technique with our legs, called the side kick. You're going to help support yourself with the cane in one leg, you're going to bring your knee up, then you're going to push to the side. Imagine you're, you're kicking an opponent in the knee, up to the side, and then back. Let's go ahead and do a total of five on this leg. One. Two, three, four, and five. Switch legs, and again. One, two, three, four, and five. And shake it out. Uh, the stance we're going to learn today is called the back stance. We're going to form an L with our feet. So you're going to have one foot pointing towards the TV, another foot pointing towards your wall or whatever is in that other direction. 90 degree angle with your feet, the foot towards the TV, step it back, bend both knees, kind of like you're sitting down, and then shift your weight onto the back leg. You can have your cane centered to help with balance. You can do it without the cane. You can even have the cane to the side. Whatever helps you. The idea though is there's not a whole lot of weight on your front leg. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on our breathing. And right now you should actually be feeling your leg. It's pulling your attention to right here, right now. And I want you to anchor yourself to that moment. All right? I want you to feel it and understand. It's really easy to be present right here, right now with your leg pulling your attention. When you have to do something long term, that's when it becomes hard to be present in the present moment. Let's switch legs. Now, again, this leg is pulling you into the here and the now. You have to really focus on this exercise. But if you take that feeling, that feeling of being present right here, right now, and you take it to when you drive, when you go shopping, 
that being in the present moment, you become so much more aware of the world and the beauty around you and what's happening in real time in the moment instead of getting lost in the past or lost in the future. Now go ahead, shake it out. The back stance. The strike I'm going to teach you today is taking the horn of the king and driving it into your opponent's chin. What's going to happen is you're going to bring the tip up, the shaft up. You're going to grab it with both hands and you're going to thrust up and forward. Thrust up and forward. You can take a step with it or you can stay in place. I prefer to take a step and put my body weight behind the strike. The idea is they're going to see the shaft, they're going to worry about that. They're not going to pay attention to the crook. And you're driving it into the chin. There's a nerve cluster there that can knock them out. But also it can break their chin. And at the very least, it's going to be distracting. Now we're going to try it from the other hand. So put your right hand on the bottom, left hand on the top. Step in, strike. You want to put your strength into this. All right? It's going to buy you time to do your next action. Even if your next action is just run away. Okay, crook strike to the chin. Now we're going to learn empty hand punch. Because sometimes our hands are busy with the cane or we drop the cane or whatever, we need still to defend ourselves. We're going to start with putting our hands to the ribs. You're going to extend out in front of you and then bring it back. Extend out in front and bring it back. And now when we extend, we're going to go a little faster and then we're going to flex everything at the end. All right, extend, punch. Allow your shoulders and hips to turn into it. All right. And you start out relaxed, explode at the end. Relax, explode at the end. That's the empty hand punch. Practice it. It takes time to become really proficient. Now we're going to show you a block which will help to protect your head. It's called the open roof block. What's going to happen is as I step back to create distance, I bring the cane up in front of me and stop with my arm at about a 45 degree angle, and then I pitch the block so that the energy slides down. Instead of taking hard like this, I allow it to deflect. Okay? Up. Remember, it comes straight up in front of you. All right, let's change hands. What we do with one hand, we always do with the other. Flex the arm at the end to make sure it's a strong block so that it'll stop the attack that's being swung down in your head. That's the open roof block. There's another block to protect your head that I'm going to show you today also. It's called the closed roof block. It's like the open roof block, but only the elbow comes over and the cane now is pointed in the other direction. And then the pitch is downward. Okay, so as you come up, pitch it down. It's almost like you're doing an uppercut. And you step back, boom. Step back, protect yourself. Okay, change hands, and ready, go. The idea is from here, you can be set up to do a strike, just deflect and run away, whatever you feel in the moment you want to do. We're going to work now on a block, a parry, that's going to, have to protect us if someone's coming in straight with an attack towards our chest or torso. It's called the parry block. I'm going to step back, I'm going to bring my hand up as if I'm looking at my watch, and then I'm going to turn my shoulders and my hips across. So, across. You're deflecting, you're guiding. It's not a hard stop. Right from the side angle, looks like this. You don't want to come in line with your eyes because you're going to block your vision and you can't see your opponent. So keep it below your line of vision. Now the other side. Some of the blocks we're going to do also with the empty hand. This one's called a knife hand block. We're going to circle the hand up in front of our body like we're looking at a mirror. 
and then we're going to flip it and show our opponent the mirror. Come up, look at the mirror, flip. And flip. This is to protect against punches that are coming towards straight at the head or the torso. It's a very effective block to keep you safe. Today's episode focuses on being present in the here and the now. What that means is not allowing your, your mind to get swept away into thoughts or fears or mistakes from the past or worries and concerns and, and, and fears of what may happen in the future. It's just allowing yourself to be in the moment, to be aware. And by choosing to do that, to be aware in the moment, you actually free yourself from struggles. Because you see, the mind, is, the mind is an excellent time machine. It's really trained at going from the future to the past and back again. The problem is, is if we spend our time in the future or the past, then how can we enjoy the present? How can we get joy out of the life that we're living right here, right now? Now, in the exercises today, there were a lot of thoughts and a lot of feelings that came up for you. Trying to pull you away from being present in the exercises. By practicing, just focusing on the movements, enjoying moving your body in, in new ways. And growing stronger, more flexible. That is helping you to learn how to be present in the here and the now. And then we take that to the outside. When we're driving, when we're shopping, when we're spending time with our family or friends, doing the things that we love and enjoy. Turning the time machine off. If there is something that needs to be dealt with, planned out, then we take some time to do that, but then we put it on the shelf. We put it away for the time when it is appropriate to work on it. That's being present in the here and the now. I can do.